Boston Strangler stars Kira Knightley, Carrie Coon, and Chris Cooper and is out now on Hulu. Knightley and Coon play reporters Loretta McLaughlin and Jean Cole, who bravely pursue the story of the Boston Strangler at great personal risk in the 1960s, putting their own lives on the line in their quest to uncover the truth. Boston Strangler is a decent movie. It feels very derivative of all other investigative journalism movies. It has the DNA of a lot of Fincher films, particularly Zodiac. For people who are a big fan of Fincher and who are a big fan of Zodiac itself, might see a ripoff of some sorts coming from this movie. But where I commend Boston Strangler is that it just has this cold, grimy, damp, uncomfortable unsettling atmosphere to it and because of that it's a very hard watch in some moments will make you squeal Kira Knightley and Carrie Coon I think make a formidable duo and I really like the dynamic of their relationship in this movie because they are two reporters and usually two reporters that have to work on a story together in these types of movies are rival reporters they don't want to work with each other and then they actually build up a friendship, but then something happens. And, you know, the typical psychological thrillers or investigative journalism cliches that they don't really happen. They actually bond together, work well together in this movie. And that was a big sigh of relief that we weren't just going down the cliches of investigative journalism movies. And while this movie takes a lot of inspiration from David Fincher's psychological thrillers, I do think that the psychological parts of this movie are the best. Those are the most interesting because that's when you feel the most uncomfortable. That's when you just feel like, oh shit, something's gonna happen here. And when you see it, it's brief, but it's just, it chill, it's chilling. It kind of makes you want to turn the movie off. And when a movie does that, it's doing its job. Even in that regard, the movie's not as gripping as it thinks it is. There's nothing here that stands out that I will be raving about in, in a psychological thriller like this for years to come. Unlike something like Zodiac or Seven or Gone Girl. I keep making the David Fincher comparisons in this review because that's exactly what this movie is. It's, it's, it feels like it's a blood relative to a David Fincher film, but it's not made by David Fincher. There's just nothing here that really sticks out to me. There's not a compelling scene that stands out. There's not a compelling sequence that stands out. The way they go about investigating isn't all that compelling because even with the psychological parts being the best parts of the movie, the investigative journalism parts are the parts of the movie that feel the most uneven. They feel the most boring. Sometimes those are the slower moving mo moments in the movie. There's also this weird greenish grayish tint to this movie that I hated. It's not easy on the eyes. My eyes were hurting after a while. This movie's an hour and 52 minutes and I feel like it, that's even then that's too long because it, it's gonna put you to sleep. Like it's a very ugly looking movie. The director of this movie must think that every psychological thriller has to have some weird color tint to it and that's not the case. It, that doesn't make the movie feel more grimy or anything, but he does a great job of building up atmosphere and some tension, especially with how some shots are framed. Although a lot of it is shot reverse shot, building up to the actual reveal of the actual Boston Strangler itself. And something that I actually really do like that this movie touches on is the multiple killer theory that if you don't know the story or if you're a casual viewer and you don't know anything about the Boston Strangler in the 1960s, there's rumors that it wasn't just one person committing the crimes and that it was multiple killers across different states and committing murders. And the movie touches on that and how these guys work together. And in that aspect was I thought hammered home really well out of all the investigative journalism parts. That was the part of the movie I was the most interested in, aside from the psychological thriller parts and watching Kira Knightley and Carrie Coon team up to investigate the story. But those parts are nowhere near as tension-filled as the psychological aspects of the movie. It has too much of that David Fincher DNA to it for me to be like, this is a great movie. It is a solid enough movie, though, where it will make you feel uncomfortable, even if it isn't as gripping as the movie leads on to be. I think Boston Strangler is better than half a bucket of popcorn. I'm not going to say I enjoyed it as much as a half a bucket of popcorn because then it's like, yeah, I enjoy watching people get murdered and women get, but no, that, that's fucked up. It's an uncomfortable half bucket of popcorn. So if you guys have seen Boston Strangler, I want to know what you thought about it. Drop me some feedback in the comment section below. I'll leave my link to my website in the description below as well. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden and I will see you at the movies somewhere.